Hello everyone and welcome back to the SULS podcast. Thank you for joining me for another instalment of the show. Today it's a it's a really interesting one. I'm joined by Mr. Declan Tolmy, who is the president of the Aberty Law Society up in Dundee. It's a really interesting conversation to have with someone from another law society from Scotland. It's quite interesting and insightful to hear what other law societies are doing, particularly one which I think is probably the most similar one to our own here in Stirling in terms of size and aims and just general tradition, general culture. And it's definitely noticeable, those similarities through this conversation that we had. So I hope you enjoy and definitely keep an eye out for further collaborations, which we're going to be having with Aberty Law Society, particularly next semester. We have a couple of ideas in the works and we'll definitely be collaborating on at least one or two events next semester. So I hope you enjoy the conversation. I definitely think it's insightful and hopefully you guys feel the same way. Welcome to the Stirling University Law Society podcast, proudly sponsored by Ashurst Advance, creating client value through advanced thinking. Now, over to your host and Vice President, Jed France. Declan, first of all, welcome to the show. I'm, I'm really excited to have you on today. I have to admit this is an episode that I've been looking to do for a while. I think even during the summers when I originally contacted you to come on the show and it's, you know, I've, I've wanted to get another society president on the podcast this series just to try and compare how life is at other unis around Scotland to, to life here at Stirling but I suppose that's all to come in the episode just now but before we jump in do you want to just kick off by telling us how your semester's been so far and how your assignments have been? Yeah well thanks for having me on Jed. Um, to be honest it's been a very busy semester so far um, yeah. in pretty constant assignments and stuff and then never mind everything else that's going on uh, but mm. overall very busy but that's how i like it so it's been all right so how, how's it been for yourself jed yeah it's pretty much the same to be honest it's um it's been hectic as i'm sure you can imagine you know yeah. everyone's still trying to find this new way of working whether it be in person or still online or a kind of combination of the two of them so it's been it's been challenging it's been really busy but like you say it's something i enjoy as well and it's nice to be i always find it better to be too busy as opposed to not busy enough i like to have a kind of packed schedule because i feel like if you're just sitting around doing nothing you know it just doesn't do good things for the mind in my personal opinion so yeah so in terms of up at Aberty, how are classes just now is it kind of like blended or are they all in person or is it all online what's it kind of looking like up there okay so in terms of um what we have online it's basically just our lectures so all our lectures are pre-recorded so we're we're meant to watch them just in our own time then we'll go in on campus for our tutorials and seminars and uh, i suppose we're quite a small uni so it's actually it actually works quite well um i'm not so sure if, it, if that's how it would work at some of your bigger universities but yeah um it's it's blended i mean i personally do prefer the kind of in-person classes, I find that more enjoyable, and to be honest, it's much easier to learn when you're in person, isn't it? Rather than just, you know, listening to something that's pre-recorded, you can't really engage with it, can you? Yeah, I suppose it is kind of, it does have its pros and cons, I suppose, because, you know, like you say, with the kind of pre-recorded lectures, or here at still when they're called podcasts, it's good because you can go and listen to them in your own time, but I always find that online seminars are a lot worse than in-person yeah. seminars because it always you know when it's online people can just sit with their cameras off and just scroll through tiktok or something and then yeah the, the lecturer will ask them a question and then it's just silence for for 30 seconds it's quite awkward and obviously you don't get away with that in person i think that's why for me personally anyway i prefer to to have seminars in person i, I quite like the podcast so it's quite nice to be able to listen to that in your own time because obviously during normal times you'll go to your lecture and if you, if you can't go to it for work commitments or if you're ill or whatever then you just end up missing it i know they do record them and stuff but it just seems to be quite more convenient to have the podcast there for for me personally so moving on to the aberty law society Declan, obviously that's why you're on the show today because you are the president of the society. So before you even got elected into the role as president, what motivated you to go for this role in the first place? Well, to be honest, it wasn't something I'd really thought about um, until 
the kind of latter half of uh, my second year, so just a few months ago, actually. I'd, I'd always been a member of the Law Society at our uni, but I hadn't really been too involved in it, although I did go to a lot of the events that it had hosted in the past. Honestly, at first, I was I kind of mulled over the idea of going for vice president, um, which eventually turned into me just thinking, you know what, screw it, I'm going to go uh-huh. for president. Uh, so, you know, I went for it, and to be honest, what really motivated me into doing going for president was the fact that I quite like being in charge of things and I like to do things mm-hmm. my own way. Yeah. Um, so looking back at the society over the past two years before I was kind of involved, there's a lot of things which I thought, you know, I do that differently. I do this, I do that. Uh, I suppose it's, it's easy to criticize people when you're not actually in that position, um, which I know now, but um, mm. yeah, I just thought I'd quite like to do things differently. And that was kind of, the big motivating part of it was there were so many things I thought I'm not really a fan of this and then as well you look at mm-hmm. what other kind of university law societies were doing so for example Sterling was one I'd mm-hmm. looked at a lot before kind of going for president I thought there's a lot of things we could be doing and I thought the best way to actually make that happen is to go for president and see what happens and I mean at the end of the day the worst thing that could happen was I didn't get elected as president it's not as if anything bad would happen but luckily yeah. I went for it and I got elected so here I am. Yeah, and how have you found it so far? Obviously, we're, we've got the first semester's almost finished for the academic year. So, how have you found it so far? Has it been enjoyable? Has it been challenging? How would you sum it up generally? Uh, well, to be honest, it's been a mix of things. First of all, I do enjoy it. I do like being in charge, and I do like actually kind of being able to shape something like this. I suppose the big thing which I kind of probably underestimated coming into it was how stressed out I'd be over absolutely everything we do. <laughs> um, like, I, I probably think more about the society than I do in my own uni work, which is mm-hmm. not a good thing at all. But, yeah, um, it's it's a lot. And I suppose I probably should have expected it. And the fact I hadn't been involved really with the society before maybe shows I was a bit naive in coming into it like this. But... Mm-hmm. Um, overall though it is enjoyable and I think it's definitely been a beneficial experience so far and I'm glad I went for it and yeah I mean now that I'm here I wouldn't want to not be president so yeah it's been a good experience so far but it's keeping me quite busy <laughs> yeah it, it does get it does get very busy especially here at Stalin as well it's yeah. like you say you do end up worrying about society stuff more than you're worrying about your union work I find myself you know, sitting doing things for the society when I've got like seminar work due or I really could start my research for an essay or an assignment or something like that. And it does take up a lot of time. And obviously it's really good for your CV and and building up contacts. I'm sure it's something that employers look fondly on. But at the same time, you know, we don't get paid for it, but we still treat it like a job. You know what I mean? So it is like volunteering in a way. And uh, it does does get very hectic. So I definitely understand the way you're feeling so yeah. you said that prior to you being president you were you were a member and you may have attended some events but you weren't you know entirely active on the society front so did you literally go from just being a normal member to jumping straight to being president is that how it went yeah that's exactly how it went um that is very impressive <laughs> looking back I, I i do kind of laugh over it because i yeah it was a big jump definitely um but uh-huh. I think anyone who knows me that that's entirely in character with what I'm like. <laughs> so yeah, it, definitely it was it was a lot, but I've made the most of it so far. I would say. Yeah. So in terms of the the AGM when you when you ran for the position of president, considering the fact that you weren't on committee before, I'm really eager to hear like what you said to the members in terms of trying to get you elected. So what were the kind of main aims that you mentioned during your speech at the AGM? My kind of big push coming in uh, with my manifesto for this was really just to kind of change a lot of things about the society. I've, I've, I've got to admit there was a lot of things I was critical of um, with the way the society had been previously. And one of the big, big things that was my main focus was um, our kind of brand. So we had our old logo, which was, you know, it was kind of black and gold. And it was entirely, it was not something I was a fan of. So one of my one of my main and I think actually this was probably the first thing I actually said was I really wanted to kind of rebrand the society. So um, anyone who kind of follows us on our social media pages will have seen uh, that we've 
we've got a completely brand new logo uh, that's entirely different from what we've had in previous years, and I would say it's quite unique compared to other yeah. law societies in Scotland as well. And um, that was something that was a really kind of instrumental in what I was saying. Um, what else we had was um, I was really kind of wanting to push our social media. I felt like compared to a lot of the other law societies in Scotland, we weren't really using our social media to its full extent. And the the big example I used for that was the fact that we didn't have an Instagram page until this year when I set it up after being elected. Um, okay. And to the best of my knowledge, we were the only law society, university law society in Scotland that didn't have an Instagram page, which yeah. I found quite baffling, actually, because looking at other societies, I thought this is generally where they engage with people the most. So it, it, it was quite baffling to me that we didn't have one. So that was a big priority. And again, people can go and check out our social media and you'll see that in terms of how active we are and the sort of things we're posting, it's, we're much more kind of engaged with what people want. We're pushing a lot more things in our social media. So that was a massive focus of mine. Um, then also one of something which I was really kind of passionate about was involving more people in the society. I felt like in previous years it was not closed off per se, but it just wasn't really as open as it could be. Um, and I didn't feel like it was really involving its members to the greatest extent possible. So w one thing that we came in and done was expand the committee. So, for example, last year we had four committee members, whereas now there's eight of us, and that's excluding the reps we have as well. Yeah. So part of that was creating two brand new roles. Um, one of them wasn't my idea, I have to admit. This was uh, our VP CARE's idea. It was to create a commercial awareness officer. So we really kind of were wanting to focus on commercial awareness, especially after there was the UCAT competition last year, which uh, generally people from our uni done quite well in. So we really wanted to push commercial awareness this year. So now we have our commercial awareness officer, Aisha, and her role. Um, then there was also our role for a marketing officer, which I do have to admit I stole directly from Sterling Law Society. Um, <laughs> it was directly from you. Um, I I really kind of wanted, with our social media, to have a much more professional look. I really wanted to have lots of professional graphics, stuff like that. So we created the role of marketing officer who kind of facilitate that, design things for us to market our events or just for social media in general. So we ended up involving uh, a friend of mine, Alicia, who uh, does a computing, who does a course in computing arts, I want to say. I could be wrong in that, which is awful of me, but <laughs> um, yeah, we brought her in and I think anyone who, again, has been following our social media over the past few months will have seen a massive improvement in the sort of uh, graphics we've been posting, um, especially as of late. She's been putting in a lot of great work, so that was something which I think was really kind of instrumental to my kind of pitch, was just really reevaluating the brand of the society and just going in new directions. Yeah. Um, so really, it's it, it's really just a case of moving forward with a brand new kind of approach. That was really what I wanted to do. Um, and then it's just your kind of, you know, the things you'd expect as well. I was really keen on pushing um, more social aspect of things. So I really wanted to have more social events. So a big part of that this year was the fact we got a social sponsor, which was, um, for anyone who's in Dundee, they might have heard of uh, this nightclub, it's Aura. Club Tea in Tropicana, uh, so we have a social sponsor with them, whereas in previous years we didn't really have one, so we've really been trying to push the social aspect. And then probably the other big thing I was really keen on pushing was a lot more academic events, especially yeah. kind of last year, which to be, in all, to be fair, it was because of COVID, we weren't really having many academic events, at least in semester one, I'll admit in semester two, we had quite a few more. Uh, and a few of them were in co cooperation with Sterling Law Society as well. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's been a big focus so far. Um, I suppose we'll talk about that later as well. But yeah, it's uh, all around. It's just a kind of really pushing a lot of things that I didn't feel like we'd really used to our full extent over the past couple of years. Yeah. Well, I definitely have to commend you because I did actually notice during the summer that you guys went 
kind of through a, a rather large rebrand similar yeah. to ourselves because our old marketing officer Aidan he kind of took charge of our social media over the summer and, and he kind of developed a new logo for us and kind of revamped all of our social media pages and we saw kind of a lot of progress on that front and it was kind of at the same time that you guys were going through the same yeah. kind of process and I did remember sharing it in our committee chat saying wow Aberty are really taking it seriously this year <laughs> so there's definitely yeah. been that there's definitely been a big improvement on that front and it's definitely something I've noticed on on Instagram particularly the kind of improvement and how active you guys are. every time I seem to open the app there's always you guys posting something either with yeah. like directly as a post or even just on the stories kind of things like that so I definitely have to commend you because you've definitely took some really big steps so far um, this academic year so in terms of the the rest of the committee you say there you've got eight committee members excluding the, the kind of reps that you have for each year group how are you finding that kind of team spirit generally and what kind of team spirit are you trying to build there at ALS well so far I feel like we've been working quite well I suppose the, the the thing with our committee is, with the exception of our vice president care, we're all brand new to committee roles. So uh, it's it's mm-hmm. kind of a unique dynamic, I would say. So we've got care who's you know our kind of experienced one. He was on the committee for two years previously, um, who kind of so he's really the only person who can kind of talk about what um it's like this year in comparison to other years. Um, but I feel like. So far, the overwhelming sense is that there's constantly something going on. We're all constantly working on something. And that's well, something I'm happy yeah. about because I do like to keep the society quite active because I am quite conscious of the fact that people can quite easily um, zone out and just kind of forget about the society. So I, I do like yeah. that kind of thing about us as well. Um, we're quite a collaborative... Collab? I can't even say the word. We work, we, we work together on a lot of... <laughs> different things um, and <laughs> yeah um yeah. we do work very well and we, we try to work together so it's not just a case of one person does one thing and nothing nothing else we all do try and cooperate on things together and obviously as president mm-hmm. i do try and facilitate that quite a lot and um, you know big example yeah. of that would be you know when anyone is planning any sort of event whether that be um a social one or an academic one and again we have different committee members who organize different sorts of things they'll pretty much all now go to our marketing officer alicia uh, and kind of you know facilitate you know graphics for promoting events things like that and um, obviously if people need access to cash they'll go to our treasurer ellie so it's really a case everyone works well together and that's the kind of atmosphere i would like rather than you yeah. know say everyone coming to me and getting me to go to someone else i, I do like having people quite independent and I've, I've really kind of tried to push that idea this year that everyone can you know make decisions for themselves they don't need to necessarily come to me to ask for things it's, you have your own responsibility and don't be afraid to use that responsibility so it's, it's it's been about kind of pushing that and just letting everyone know that it's okay to do your own sort of thing as long as it's in line with the kind of society uh, goals for the semester so it's it's really just been about that sort of stuff yeah well i definitely it definitely seems like you guys are very similar to us just you know further north in scotland because <laughs> we myself and our president claire we're trying to kind of foster that same culture as, you, as yourselves in terms of making it more about I've been a team as opposed to like yeah. you say someone in a role wanting someone else to do something on committee as opposed to coming to myself or a president Claire just go to that yeah. person directly and just work together and then obviously myself and Claire are there really to just kind of help and assist in any kind of issues or difficulties or things like that just to try and help everyone work together so we try and do that at the committee meetings every week as well rather than myself or Claire sitting there saying okay you do this you do that blah 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 what have you been up to yeah just making it more like okay what's everyone been up to do you want to tell everyone what's been going on the past week and just try and get people talking to each other as opposed to myself and Claire just kind of sitting there trying to coordinate you know 10 different people it's definitely not a, an easy task so as you mentioned Declan you're we did have a quite a strong relationship with the Aberty Law Society particularly in the second semester in the last academic year we collaborated on a couple different events at least and we are going to work together in the future as well on, on mooting this year, which I'm really looking forward to. So is that something that you guys are looking to continue this year? You're looking to collaborate with the Stone Law Society again? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as, as you said, there was a lot of events that um, the society, 
or two societies worked on together um, in semester two last year, and I attended quite a few of those. Um, mm-hmm. And generally, they were really good events as well. Um, and obviously, Mooton as well. That's a big thing. Obviously, I know um, at your society, Mooton is part of the Law Society, whereas here at Aberdeen, yeah. we have a separate Moot Club, which uh, again, we'll t- I know we're going to talk about it later, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, absolutely. I think the, the the benefits of working together can't really be um, overstated, you know, especially yeah. for kind of smaller um, societies such as mm-hmm. us in comparison to some of the bigger law societies at bigger universities. I feel like there's so many more opportunities as well when you work together, um, and I, I, I just think it can't be overstated. And I mean, again, for smaller unis, you know, things like attendance can be an issue whereas if you kind of pull your resources together right that kind of becomes less of an issue so there's definitely so much merit in working together with other law societies not even just sterling as well you know i I really do like the idea of working with law societies around scotland and you you'll be aware jed that um all the law society presidents in scotland have a group chat which your president clears in as well so um it is nice to kind of have that atmosphere where people are willing to kind of help each other out with things and do events together so it's it's definitely something i'm keen on and it aligns with our kind of sensibilities at Aberdeen law society so it's in my mind there's no kind of cons to it there's it's all only kind of benefits so definitely something i want to continue going forward yeah i definitely agree with what you said there Dick, kind of about the kind of smaller societies sticking together and trying to help build each other up because you know i feel like there's a, definitely a few societies around the country that we've worked with before and when we collaborate on an academic event the numbers are, are really really good and it's definitely a significant boost on you know if we were to just kind of do it independently on our own we've definitely seen that last year when we collaborated with Aberdeen Law Society and it's definitely something that I know myself and Claire are, are keen to push on with in the future and you know it's we definitely need to stick together I think because you know outside of the, maybe the, the top two unis in the country you know those guys can afford to kind of do their own things because of the, the membership base and how committed everyone is there they're always going to get amazing numbers but when you kind of come out of that bubble so to speak you know the numbers can be quite bad yeah. You know, it can be quite hard to try and plan things, you know. Then it always makes us, I don't know about you guys, it always makes us quite nervous when you're trying to, you know, you, we try and set ourselves ambitious targets. We want to do events with people who are in kind of senior roles and who have a lot of power in the legal industry and things like that. But you're always kind of nervous to get them to come to an event and speak and, and plan and, you know, literally take time out of their busy schedule to come speak to you in, in case you get maybe like three or four people turn up and they're literally like, Oh God! You know why have I, why have I agreed to this? So it's definitely something that um we're keen to to push on with in the future. So we did speak about mooting generally there. I do just want to touch on it here, Declan. As you mentioned, you know, mooting at Aberdeen is like a separate society, and you are the VP of the Aberdeen Moot Club. So first of all, what is it about mooting generally that interests you? Mooting wasn't actually something I got involved with until second year. So. My first experience of it was an internal competition at um, Aberty, which I ended up being a runner-up in. So, mm-hmm. uh, kind of from the outset, what I liked about it is the fact that it, it actually has a lot of benefits for just university work in general. So, what I noticed is that um, I, I, I saw quite a big improvement in my work after doing because it involves so much kind of preparation you have to really plan out arguments well in advance and a lot of time management as well so yeah. for me it really just brought a lot of benefits um, and then there's also the aspect of of just finding it quite satisfying you know I, I like you know to argue points and if you if you've done well and you know you've done well it's such a satisfying feeling um, and th- that's really kind of why I continued moving after that so then in I want to say March last year, um, or last year this year actually, March this year, um, mm-hmm. myself and Eve, Eve, who's the president of the Moot Club this year, um, we took part in the Lord Jones Moot competition, which I believe you were actually spectating, Jed, if I remember. Yes, correctly. I was there. Yeah. Yes, I was. I was cheering on the Sterling girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we got to take part in that as well, which was a very big learning experience. Actually, there was two teams from Aberdeen and. Again, Sterling was against one of our teams, and you did win 
Um, yeah, I remember watching ah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember watching that movie very intensely. Um, yeah, but yeah, um, again, that was a very big learning experience, and I just feel that it, there's so many benefits to it. I mean, of course, um, it is a big time commitment, and, and it's not going to suit everyone. If you don't like public speaking, I'm not going to yeah. lie; it's definitely not something for you. But Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, it just kind of appeals to all the things I like about uni. I'm quite keen on things like debating as well, so it just yeah. really aligned with a lot of my interests. Yeah, I definitely find it interesting as well. It's something that we had to do in our second year on the LLB as part of our commercial law module. We had to do a kind of commercial moot, and yeah. I suppose my year was unfortunate that it was online, so it wasn't really a moot as such. It was more us preparing our arguments and then presenting it in front of a webcam and just submitting it so there was no kind of rebuttal there there was no other side you're ultimately arguing yeah. against so it wasn't a moot as such but you still kind of got the skills of you know identifying the issues preparing the arguments and trying to structure your arguments which again like you say wouldn't just help you in mooting it'll help you in your essays and ultimately down the line as a solicitor as well if that's ultimately what you're looking to go into and i, I quite enjoy it from the performance aspect i was never involved in drama or anything when i was yeah. younger but i definitely do enjoy kind of you know standing up and, and speaking the kind of being a bit of a performer it definitely kind of channels those kind of energies as well yeah and it's not something that i particularly have time for right now but it's definitely something that i'm looking to to push and on the society so you did mention there about time management so i'm really genuinely interested here Dick on how you manage to juggle two senior positions across two different societies how how on earth do you manage that um I'm not gonna lie it's not an easy one at all yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> um it's a lot at times and then when you factor in everything else that you know I have going on and that's not just me is obviously a lot of people have a yeah. lot of things going on but yeah it can be a lot it can be quite intense but I've always been someone who just likes to make life more difficult for myself. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, in all honesty, though, it's it, it keeps me busy and I enjoy that. And then there's just the fact that I like having the positions, I like having that sort of responsibility. Mm-hmm. And looking further down the line, it's going to benefit me immensely when it comes to applications, things yeah. like that. And even just in kind of general practice as well, or in uni, there's, there's so many skills to be learned from kind of your... Um, you know, society position. So I think um, the benefits outweigh the cons of that, but mm-hmm. it is something I'm conscious of a lot of the time that I'm spending so that I'm spending you know so much time on you know the law society, then the moot club, and then mm-hmm. possibly kind of neglecting some of my university work. So it's it's kind of like a constant battle to balance it all. But so far, it hasn't seemed to have too much of a negative impact on uni work. So mm-hmm. hopefully, it continues for the rest of the year. But as I say, there's people out there who do a lot more than I do, so mm-hmm. um, I'm pro- probably not the best person to listen to when it comes to time management, but <laughs> um, yeah, it's just about honestly trying your best to balance it, because at the end of the day, um, I don't think there's going to ever be a perfect balance yeah. when you're doing a million different things. Yeah, no, I definitely agree, and I think it makes a big difference if you actually enjoy it. You know, I've you know, I've always said that I could never do an LLB law degree and, and be in a senior position for the law society if I didn't enjoy it. Like, the, yeah. in terms of how much time it takes and how much energy you have to give to it emotionally as, as well, you know, it's <laughs> it's a lot and it can drain you. And if you don't enjoy it, you know, you won't last very long on this course or, or in these kind of positions because, like I say, it just takes so much out of you. And I always yeah, think, absolutely. like you say there as well, about the, the kind of future employment prospects it's i always say you know suffer now prosper later that's the way i'm kind of <laughs> approaching the, yeah. the the law society and, and the LLB <laughs> generally as well so um yeah it's definitely a difficult balance but it definitely sounds like you're doing a really good job with it Declan. so back to als how have you guys found this semester as a whole in terms of online events like have they been online or they've been in person or a hybrid or generally how have your events been so far this semester So far, we've attempted a hybrid approach. Um, So we've had a few in-person events, we've had a few things online. To be honest, I personally prefer in-person events, but I'm also quite conscious of the fact that with your kind of online ones, there's so many more possibilities for what you can, what sort of events you can put on, you know. I mean, a lot of it kind of also depends on your location. So there's a lot lot of, you know, lawyers who are based in Edinburgh, Glasgow, who we could have to speak at events now because they're online but yeah. if it was in person realistically are they going to travel to dundee 
Um, and that's one of the issues of kind of being in one of the smaller cities is that you've not got as big a pool of speakers around you, which I'm sure was probably a, quite a big issue back in the day before um, mm -hmm. COVID happened. But now with kind of online events, it has made it a lot easier. And yeah, it just allows us to kind of appeal to a wider range of people. And you also have to take into the account into account of the fact that a lot of people at Aberdeen commute into university, so they're not actually yeah. able to come to um, our in-person ones. So having the online aspect as well allows people to kind of not be excluded from the possibility of going to these events. So all round, I feel the hybrid approach is probably the best approach for us, um, and it's what, at least for the foreseeable future, we're going to continue doing. Yeah, I definitely think it's... There's pros and cons to both. If, in an ideal world, I would love to have all events in person because I do feel like you get more yeah. value from it. It's more personal. You actually see the people there and you can speak on a one-to-one -one basis without the need for extensive webcam equipment and, and things like that and, and a stable internet connection, which isn't always guaranteed. But like you say, it, it definitely opens up the possibilities in terms of speakers that you can have because we had a, a legal tech event towards the beginning of this semester and the names that we were able to get to come speak to us you know, we had people from London, like Edinburgh, Aberdeen, like you're never going to get them to come speak to you in Stirling unless it's online. They're never going to make the travel. You know, we can't ask anyone to come up yeah. from London just to speak to us for one night without paying them or paying for their travel or <laughs> yeah. their, their, their accommodation or anything like that. So it's definitely pros and cons. And like I said, it would be nice to have everything in person, but I think, you know, there's a lot of benefits to having things online in terms of accessibility for people because you don't want to be excluding anyone who perhaps maybe has like childcare commitments and things like that and they can't afford to, to come into campus or whatever it may be at like six o'clock at night. So it's hard, but I hope you guys are making the most of it for sure. So in terms of engagement, you know, this is a perhaps a sensitive topic, but it's something that, that we've struggled with this semester at SULS. You know, we've tried a variety yeah. of different events whether it be online in person things like that it's it's been quite tough to try and get people engaged and, and, and coming along on a consistent basis don't get me wrong not all events have been poorly attended we've had some pretty strongly attended ones as well but in, in terms of trying to get that consistency it's been tough you know you'll have maybe one person come yeah. along who seems really keen for one event or one social and then you never see them again and it's, it's quite strange it's yeah. trying to get them to come to like loads of events it's been it's been quite tough and, and don't get wrong i completely understand that you know it's still a very overwhelming time for people especially if they're on the llb obviously it's a very demanding course and i'm no doubt they'll have work commitments and trying to have a personal life around that as well it's not easy and i'm not trying to say that you know sls should be at the top of their priority list but in terms of engagement for you guys at als how have you found it so far this semester have you managed to get decent numbers at your events or have, have you struggled similarly to us yeah we're we're kind of in the same boat if i'm being entirely honest um mm -hmm. I, when we're when we have events coming up i've got to admit i lose sleep over just thinking about what the attendance is going to be like yeah um yeah it's it, it, it really does vary event to event and what we've found is it's harder to get people to come to in-person events, which mm -hmm. I've got to admit shocked me at first when we started seeing the lower attendance at anything we we did in person. But it's yeah, it's hard to predict um, how many people are going to come to certain events. And as you say, it's it's really a worry when you've got people coming in as well because mm -hmm. you know it, it's bad if you've got an event with you know external speakers and only a couple of people show up. Yeah. Um. And it's 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 even you know we put in a lot of effort to try and encourage people to come, and sometimes people just aren't really interested in the events or they can't come for whatever reason. Um, it's yeah, it's a hard one. But what we have found is, although our we've struggled with our academic events, we've had absolutely no issues with um, our social ones. So yeah, um, us too. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, at least we've got that going for us at the moment. People still are up for um, having a good time, it seems like. But yeah, yeah um, as I say, we can only keep trying, but it is, it is a worry at times. And it kind of links into what we were saying earlier about working together is that kind of can help with issues like that. You know, if you've got a, an event with multiple societies coming, you're obviously going to be a lot less worried about mm -hmm. attendance because even if you get a small number from each uni, it's still better than, yeah. you know, 10 people from one. So, it's, yeah, it's it's something we worry about. But at the end of the day, 
we're going to keep putting on these events so if people want to come they can come um, and yeah it's it, there's not really much that can be said otherwise from that to be honest yeah it is tough and you know like you say <laughs> it's similar here in Stirling and the fact that you know if ever we organize you know a trip to the pub or, or going out just to drink you know see people seem more than happy to turn up for that but trying <laughs> to get that those attendance figures translated into academic events has been it's been it's been yeah. impossible and it really does get frustrating and that's not me calling anyone out of course people are allowed to go out and have fun I'm, I'm not saying they shouldn't by any stretch of the imagination but obviously when you you a lot of effort goes into academic events particularly the, the legal tech one which i mentioned you know as someone myself who's interested in legal tech the, the names that we had there were like if you think of legal tech in Scotland or in the UK in general, the names we had there are like the top five that come up. And I'm thinking this is an absolutely unbelievable event for people to come yeah. to and just gain an insight. And, you know, legal tech is something that whether you want to work in that area specifically, you know, you have to know about it generally, regardless of what you want to do in the legal industry. And, you know, just seeing the numbers was like, it, it, it's, it's hard. And then you go to the pub and you see 20 yeah. people and you're like, where have you guys been the full semester? Do you know what I mean? Like, any chance you could give a guy yeah. a hand here and come to the academic event. So we bring these professionals in. We don't look like, yeah. you know, a bit silly. But like we say, there's not much that can be said for it. There's, there's not much really we can do. Obviously, we're still going to keep putting them on and hopefully something will, will strike the brains at some point. So to, to, to round us off, Declan, for today's episode, what are your plans for the future obviously i think we're both in third year are you planning on running for president again next year or, or what about your career path do you have anything you're dead set on right now well i've been asked the question if i'll run again a lot yeah. <laughs> it's it's some it's something i've thought about um to be honest there's not really a clear answer so i'll probably disappoint you here jed but it's still early days Dick, when it's part saying, of me yeah. sort of, <laughs> but i'm kind of conscious of the fact that there are other people who could probably contribute a lot um, next year but at the same time a part of me thinks you know I've, I've now I've got the experience there's so much more I could do next year mm -hmm. um, and I've got to admit I've got a lot of kind of new ideas forming that we could possibly do for next year so even if I haven't even if I don't go for president again I, I've got a lot of plans for yeah. <laughs> the next year so um, yeah it's, it's just kind of about weighing that up but I do have to admit that a part of me doesn't want to leave now that I'm president. I'm like, why shouldn't I go for it again? Exactly. So, yeah, it's, yeah I, I, I'm thinking about it. I, to be honest, I, I feel like I'm probably more likely not to try going for it again, but mm -hmm. it depends at the time. If anyone else I know wants to go for it, uh -huh. I'll see what happens. But it's something I'm bearing in mind. But who knows? That's that, that's the honest answer. Who knows? Yeah. It's, it's a maybe. And then in terms of like going forward, you know, career path and stuff like that, there's kind of two ways I could go. So um, I've got two kind of interests that kind of stem uh, from a law, and they're both part of the reason why I, I picked law in the first place. So there's the kind of corporate law aspect of it. Um, I've always been interested in that sort of world and that career kind of line. Um, I really like business and the kind of business behind the law as well. And yeah. so far, my favourite modules have kind of been the business-related business, business related ones. So mm -hmm. that's kind of one way and then the other side of it's kind of the more political world mm -hmm. um i absolutely love uh, public law so uh, admin law and then constitutional law mm -hmm. uh, i'm a very politically minded person as well so that kind of bears a lot into like my kind of studies as well so that's kind of one other way i could go but honestly um i'm just going to see how things go i mean after university i plan to go and do the diploma and then yeah. do a traineeship regardless of what I've I plan on doing so um it's, it's kind of constantly evolving so we'll see what happens but i've got two kind of general plans but as i say it kind of depends on where i'm at when i yeah. get to the point of choosing so yeah there's a few ways i could go yeah well it's good i definitely think it's good that you're keeping your your options open because with all the work that you're doing right now with als and and the moot club as well you're gonna have uh, a lot of options there for you i think there'll be loads of employers that will be keen to have someone like you, you know, who's so. already working themselves into the ground so that can, you know, <laughs> it saves them having to do it for you. So, yeah, um, yeah I definitely do. I do wish you all the best uh, for the future, Declan. I think you're going to absolutely smash it once you eventually graduate. And I'm looking forward to collaborating with Aberdeen Law Society at some point well this semester or most likely in the second semester next year so yeah thank you so much for for coming on it's been an absolute pleasure to chat to you and hopefully i'll get to meet the rest of your team soon and, and collaborate in some way 
Thanks for having me, Ted. Thank you for listening to the Stirling University Law Society podcast. Be sure to check out our website and social media pages through the links below. 